everybody, so today I'm going to be recommending books to you all. I haven't done a recommendations video in quite a while and I decided to do one for you guys today and it's a very different kind of recommendations video than what I usually do. I am not just gathering a bunch of random books together that I really liked and recommending them to you. I'm going to be doing kind of like a specialized version of that. So for example, I'm going to be holding up a book here and I'm going to be like, if you like this book, then you're going to like this book. And I know that might sound a little bit confusing right now, how I'm explaining it, so just hold on one second and then you're gonna see how I'm gonna do it when I start the recommendations. So let's get started. So if you like the Mortal Instruments series or Infernal Devices series by Cassandra Clare, then you're definitely going to love Ruby Red by Kirsten Gear. This book is fantastic for all you Mortal Instruments lovers. I wish I found this book when I was done reading the Mortal Instruments series and not months and years later because this is just what you need when you're having a Shadow Hunter hangover. Okay, before you get too excited, no, they're not demon fighting awesome badasses in this book, but there's time travel, which is equally awesome if you ask me, because I think time travel is so freaking cool. This book is about a girl named Gwen, and she is from a family of time travelers, but she does not know that she actually can time travel herself. And then she is thrust into the world of time travel, secret societies, bad guys, dog, are you okay? Okay. and lots of other crazy stuff. Just like Clary is when she finds out she's a shadow hunter and then she has to go fight demons and fight her dad and then her brother, she has lots of family issues. But the reason I also recommended anybody who loves the Infernal Devices for this book is because of the time travel aspect. She travels back into time into the 17 or 1800s and as you know the Infernal Devices takes place in the late 1800s so if you like historical stuff like Infernal Devices has you're definitely going to love this book and it both also has lots of humor in it which is very fun and kind of just like you laugh a lot in this book you just like love laughing and they really did a good job translating this book as well because this book was originally a German book but they translated it into a bunch of other languages including English which I have now and also a fun fact that they both have in common they're also movies as you know City of Bones was a movie yeah it was a movie and Ruby Red is a movie and it is fantastic and it actually has more movies now and I think they're working on the third movie unless it's out already in Germany so if you want to go check out this movie definitely go search online somewhere like Rubenrot because Rubenrot is the working title for it that's the original title in German R-U-B-I-N-R-O-T and then English version movie and then you'll get it next is Shatter Me by Tahira Mafi and if you love Shatter Me you're definitely going to love The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken. And the reason I say this is because in Shatter Me there are superhumans with superpowers and just like that in The Darkest Minds they also have that and it's really cool because honestly the superpowers that they have in both these books are very unique and different from what you originally think a superpower is. For example, Juliet, she's the main character in Shatter Me, she has the power to kill somebody with her touch, which is not that great of a superpower, but she grows into it and she grows from it and she becomes an awesome character. And the same thing happens in The Darkest Minds. There is a certain group of people who have these super hat powers and it also takes place in a dystopian time. So it's really cool and I really recommend anybody who loves Shatter Me to read The Darkest Minds. Next, if you love Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Moss, you're definitely going to love The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. First of all, this book had the biggest plot twist I've ever read about, ever, and I don't know how I didn't catch it, but once I caught it, I'm like, how didn't I catch that? Because it is so big, and oh, such a good book, guys. Like, such a freaking good book. Just like Throne of Glass, and the reason I recommend all you Throne of Glass lovers The Kiss of Deception is because The Kiss of Deception has kings and queens and princesses and princes and different realms and different kingdoms that are kind of sort of at war, just like in Throne of Glass. And no, Selena and Leah are not similar characters at all. Like, Selena, she's a freaking assassin and Leah is a princess, but Leah is not a prissy princess. She runs away from being a princess because she does not like that life. And they both have, like, guys in it. They both have two guys coming after them. Not in, like, I'm gonna come after you and, like, murder you. Well, kind of. But they both have these guys. One of them is, like, sweet. One's a prince. And then one's not a prince. And, you know, all that stuff. But they're different characters, different types of guys in both these books. Don't worry. They're not exactly similar. But both these characters, both Leah and Selena, grow into themselves and 
figure out what the heck is up with them, their past, their future, their destiny, and it is just beautiful, beautiful books. And I highly recommend both these books if you actually haven't either read them because they're fantastic. Next, if you love Divergent, then you're definitely going to adore The Murder Complex by Lindsay Cummings. And why is that, Sasha? Because they're both freaking badass books with badass characters, lots of blood and gore. Actually, that's just mainly The Murder Complex. But in a way that they are similar is that just like in Divergent, how you have the factions. There's also a, not a faction system in this book, but there's like the rich and then the poor, and there's a huge gap between the two. There's no gray area, it's just the rich and the poor. And where the rich live, nobody dies, but where the poor live, um, people are murdered like every day. The death rate is higher than the birth rate. That's the tagline, I think, for this book, which is awesome but kind of scary and sad and oh my god. But they both have very strong female characters like Triss and Meadow. Meadow and Triss are not really fearless, but they kind of are fearless. They do have things that scare them, they do have fears, but they're fearless in the way that they go after things that they really believe in, and they believe in themselves and others, and it's just, these characters are just so inspiring, and I love both of them so much. So if you like Divergent, definitely go pick up The Murder Complex. It is freaking awesome, and the next book comes out in April. Next, if you liked Obsidian by Jennifer L. Armentrout, you're definitely going to love Alienated by Melissa Landers, because Oh my god, these books are both fantastic, and they have aliens in them, and you know I love my aliens. I love them so much. The aliens in both of these books are very polar opposites, because in this book, the aliens are known from the very start. They know that they're there, people on Earth know that they're there, but in Obsidian, they are hidden even though they are on Earth. And <laughs> Well, yeah, finish the series. But they also take place in present time, and that is really an awesome part of it because you're like, oh my gosh, this can happen like today. This could actually happen. There can be aliens coming down to Earth right now. It doesn't even have to be dystopian or anything. Sasha, no, that's really bad. No, no. You shouldn't want aliens to come down and invade Earth. But that would be kind of cool and scary but awesome. And the romances in both these books are just beautiful and amazing and just extraordinary that two different people from two different freaking planets can come together and just fall in love and it's really beautiful love stories in both these books and there's lots of mystery, action, suspense, love, just really beautiful books, both of them and I just, these books definitely hold a special part in my heart because they're just fantastic. And I just got the Turkish edition of the beautiful alienated book and it's so freaking cool, it's like blanket. Look, it's like a blanket. The cover like hugs it. it. Hugs the book pages. It's really cool. I like it. So if you're from Turkey or you speak Turkish, death this book. It's really awesome. And lastly, if you love The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey, you're going to adore Broken Skies by Teresa Kay. I just finished Broken Skies and oh my gosh, where was this book when I was finishing reading The Fifth Wave like a year ago? Like where was this book? The similarities in these books are that girl needs to fight to survive and then the human population is very low because of things that happen, but that's the difference between these two books. In this book, the aliens actually killed the humans and wanted them gone, but in this book, the humans killed themselves out of fear because they decided to just go throw bombs everywhere and be like, let's get the aliens out, but they instead killed themselves. Major flaw in the human race. It's okay, like hopefully that never happens. No. I live in a major city. But there's also beautiful intergalactic relationships in both these books and it really shows that not all aliens are bad. There are some that really want to help you and both the main characters in these books, they're both fantastic, they're both very strong female protagonists and they are just put into these situations that are just mind-blowing and they handle them so well even though there's lots of baggage behind their stories and where they came from and all the shit has happened in the past. So there's lots of similarities in these books, but they definitely stand apart from each other. But I definitely can see people loving The Fifth Wave, adoring Broken Skies. Side note, I really wanted to recommend Silent Echo by Elisa Freelich to you guys, but honestly I could not find a book that's similar to this book that you guys would know of because this book is just so, it's so unique that it's kind of hard to match with any other book out there. That's what I really loved about this book. It's just so beautiful and fantastic and it really is just special to me. But I couldn't find a book that would really fit it in this video. So I'm just gonna recommend it to you guys anyways because I really loved it and I was just thinking about it. So I'm like, I'm gonna recommend it to you guys because I think that everybody should read this book. And I think it also should become a movie, but you know, 
I can't control that. So that is all for my recommendations video. I hope you guys enjoyed it because I know I enjoy doing it for you guys. And if you want to see more of these types of recommendation videos, tell me below. I would love to know. And if you want to check out any of these books, I'll be leaving all their links in the description box below. So go check it out once you're done viewing this video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Take me to your leader. I'm seriously insane. I'm okay with that. I'm really okay.